we are going to be working on zebras created by our hand tracing. And we're going to work on a background for our zebras. First of all, let's enjoy some photographs of this beautiful animal. They look like horses, but they're really unlike horses because their mane and their body is made up of these striped bristles. They are actually from Africa, the safari. And here you can see groups and families of them in the wild. There are the safari grasses. They're just an amazingly beautiful animal. I hope you enjoy these pictures and soon we'll start our project. Hello boys and girls. Today we are going to create a zebra just by tracing our hand. So first step is receiving a piece of paper and then we just need a black crayon to trace our hands with. Here we go. Alright boys and girls we are going to be creating a zebra and we are going to trace our hand to create the head and the ears. So you're going to lay your hand down on your paper. You can lay it this way with your thumb up and your hands out or your fingers out. Sorry about that. Thumb up and your fingers out. And I'm going to move my sleeve away. The thumb is going to be the ear. So I want to make sure my thumb is sticking up. So I'm going to start by tracing over my thumb carefully up and down. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of the paper. Then I'm going to trace around my fingers, creating the face of the zebra. I'm going close, 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 and down, down, down. And here we go. We have a shape for the ears. We have a shape for the face. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to draw the zebra's eyes. I can't see two eyes because one of them is on the other side. We're going to make an eye. And this shape is going to be the ear. So I'm just going to show the inside of the ear. And maybe I'll add a little now, a zebra has special marks on its um, body. It has black stripes, but up here I'm only going to show part of the stripe. Color it in. And it's going to go around its mouth and color it in. Uh oh, I forgot to put his nose. Draw his nose. And maybe I'll show one little nostril. There he goes. So now I'm going to work on the stripes. We could also use paint sticks or paint to create our stripes. I'm going to have some stripes at the top of his head. Going down. And I'd like some stripes on the side of his head going down to his neck. This is a very much a close-up 
of the zebra. And I want some going up. I'm going to give him a smile. There he goes. Maybe he's about to eat a nice little leaf. And I'm bringing my stripes from the bottom of his face up. If you'd like to make it kind of fancy and fun, you could add eyelashes. And here we go. I want to make a lot of stripes on my zebra. The zebra's colors are black and white. So we're not going to add any other colors except black and white inside the body of the zebra. A zebra also has hair on the back of its neck called a mane and we'll add that too. Coming in from the side, they almost look like triangle shapes from the side. And then they can turn into big stripes on the body of the zebra. This is another African animal. Now I wasn't hurrying. You can see I'm trying to work very hard and fill in the color. Now we'll decide if we're using paint sticks or paint, but we'd like to add some more dynamic color around our zebra. Oh, I wanted to add another ear. Look at this. I'm going to copy what I hear, have here. And so my zebra has two ears, little hair, and then look. We have to make a little of that black hair down the back of the zebra's neck. And that is creating the zebra's mane. Thank you, boys and girls. That's our first step. All right, class. Our next step would be adding color. There might be a variety of ways we'll do that. We're not going to add color necessarily within this zebra. We may add a little more black to these lines, but if you happen to be working with a paint set, I'd like to show you how it's done properly. Okay? You're going to need a paint set, paper towel, water, and a brush. And you're going to notice your brush has these little hairs at the end called bristles. Oh, what a terrible brush. Mine's falling apart. Oh no. I have to glue that back together. The bristles are soft and we only use the bristles in a very gentle manner. Back and forth, nice and softly, so that we don't crush those little bristles by pushing them down too hard or splitting these fine, fine, fine little hairs so it ends up with a crazy bad hair day and you ruin your brush. So it's always back and forth very gently. Now first, we're going to add a little color to the end of the nose on the zebra. So you get your brush wet and we're going to dip into a yellow and we're going to move it back and forth carefully. You can kind of swirl softly. Don't press too hard. And now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here. It's a little dry. I'm going back in the yellow. And you notice I'm going softly back and forth. And that's how you move watercolor around. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm not mashing it or smashing it. I'm being very careful. Maybe I'll move my water over here. Here we go. Now I'd like to add a little more black into this zebra's stripes. All right. carefully.
Okay, finally we're going to work on background color. Once this is dry, fresh water, a brush. This is a larger brush with flat bristles, like a flat squared head. I still have my watercolors, and we are going to work within the warm colors. Our oranges and yellows. If we could also work with the cool colors. We have to decide that. But today, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with warm colors. So I'm going to dip my brush and get this nice, soft, cocoa brown color wet. And I'm just going to start painting around this little zebra's body. Going back in water washing it out and I'm going to try a little orange. I really have to make sure it's wet. I'm moving from orange to brown. I'm wetting my brush. I'd like to do more yellow. And we're working our way around. <laughs> 